Welcome to the Emotionally Healthy Leader Podcast. My name is Rich Velotis. I'm the lead pastor at New Life Fellowship Church here in Queens, New York City. And I'm with Pete Scazzaro as always. Pete is the founder of New Life Fellowship as well as the founder of Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. Now we have uh, the EHS conference, the Emotionally Healthy Leadership Conference coming up in April. Uh, and I'm very excited about it because every year uh, we give new material. This year it seems like, almost all of it seems like new material. And it's gonna be a fresh conference. And so if you've been to prior conferences, you're gonna to wanna to come to this one as well because there's uh, new research, new materials that are coming out. And one of the uh, big topics of conversations that you're, you've been writing about uh, in your forthcoming book, uh, The Emotionally Healthy Leader, is on the issue of exercising power and wise boundaries. And so uh, I wanted you to just explore on a couple of these things yep. here, but before we even talk about some of the specifics, why did you write a chapter on power and wise boundaries? Uh, I included that as one of the key issues of emotionally healthy leadership because it's probably the area where I made my largest, most painful mistakes as a lead pastor for 26 years. And it's not talked about very much, and I hadn't been mentored in it. it was, so it was very fuzzy because we're supposed to be, we're all together as the family of Jesus. Uh, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, and we're a community. We're the body of Christ. We're a family. Those are all the images used. And so it got very confusing as the church grew, and some people were elders, others were on staff, others were paid, some were not paid, we were friends, I was your, I was your mentor, I was your teacher, I was your counselor, I was your pastor, I was your close friend. It was very muddled, it all very muddled as we grew. And so it was, these lessons came out of so much pain that I just decided I gotta write this down for future generations because if I can just save a few people pain, it's worth it. Then I, I began to ask people, Rich, like when I would travel, and speak, like, like, what's been the most difficult thing that you've experienced? And almost inevitably, got to, people who've been a long time in one, one church or community, almost inevitably came back to hurt relationships and friendships, people they started with that were very close, and breakdowns and betrayals and misunderstandings all around issues of power mm. and wise, healthy boundaries. And so my task was, was to try to figure out some way to organize it. So you wrote here uh, 10 principles for exercising power and wise boundaries. We'll, we'll go into three, maybe four. Uh, so I'm gonna just, I'll read it out to you and just yeah. give some commentary as to what you're trying to get at here. And so the first uh, principle of exercising power and wise boundaries is to do an honest inventory of the power God has granted you. An honest inventory of the power yes. God has granted you. What do, what do you mean by that? So actually, there's different aspects of power. And so we tend to look at it one-dimensionally, like, okay, I'm a, a, I have a position as a board member or as a pastor. Uh, but there's lots of other aspects and dimensions of power. There's the fact that, Rich, you can uh, preach. You have certain gifts and experience. That's a lot of power. Uh, and you gotta take that into account. The gifts God's given you give you a certain level of power. There's a God factor that's related to power. In other words, we represent God. Uh, it's not just like we're just corporate CEOs. We stand up and we're, people attribute to us and speak to us, look at us like, there's a, there's a mysterious God factor to it. And so Very scary. Very scary. <laughs> so one thing to preach from a pulpit, a passage of scripture, then you're giving your opinion about what color rug we should have. Do you understand? <laughs> and people have a hard time distinguishing the fact that who cares if he likes blue? Yeah. All I know is he speaks the word of God up there. And so there's that. Then there's even just people have projections that they, they maybe they didn't have a father or mother growing up. They have a low sense of self. They end up merging their self with you as the leader. And that gives you a tremendous amount of power. Uh, then there's this relational power, walking with people over years through crises like marriages and deaths. And, and there's a loyalty that's developed over time with that. that that's a lot of power. So uh, then, you got, then you got cultural, and generational, and age issues. So there are certain cultures, for example, Rich, that in our church from Africa or parts of Asia, uh, that they give us a power because we're pastors on staff yeah. that comes out of Confucianism that goes back 5,000 years and honoring elders that we know nothing of like in America. And then there's age, right? Just age, you know. Uh, it's funny. In, in American culture, you have more power than me because you're young and you're hip and cool. Uh, 
in other cultures here at New Life because they come from places where the, the, eight, the oldest person in the family just rules, just, yeah. just has the final word, that for them, like, I have all the power because of my age. They just, you know, mm -hmm. whether position, they, they can't even just sort out the position. Yeah. Though. So all these are nuances um, that we need to become a, be a very aware of as we wield it. Mm. Uh, so we wield it carefully, prudently, and thoughtfully, not just like, you know, yeah. Yeah. flippantly. It's great. So inventory of the power God has granted you. So the second one is you put here to enlist wise counsel to monitor dual relationships. Yeah. So wise counsel to monitor dual relationships. Let's talk about what a dual relationship is. Dual relationship means uh, that I'm relating to you on two levels. Uh, so think, for example, of a, let's compare it to, say, a doctor. I go to my doctor, I pay him money, he, he's my medical doctor, he's not my best friend, he's my doctor. I go to a lawyer, same thing, there's, there's a clear delineation of the relationship. I go to a therapist or a counselor, it's a very boundary relationship. Uh, I'm not going to dinner with my therapist, they're my therapist. They're not asking, I'm not asking them about their life and problems, it's, it's a one-way relationship. Same thing with a spiritual director. Uh, and, and these are boundaried, one-way relationships. Yeah. Dual relationships get more complicated. Uh, that's why you know a dual relationship is I'm your pastor. That's a, that's a certain relationship. I'm I'm I bring influence so you might flourish in Christ. That's my role with you, um, and it is an authority role. It, it's understood. It gets a little more complicated when now we go on vacation together, and you're my friend. I'm your pastor, but now I'm sharing with you my struggles with the board, and you're taking care of me. It's now a dual relationship. I'm your friend, but I'm also your pastor and spiritual authority, and it can get complicated. And then if I hire you to be on the staff team, now I'm also your employer, paying your mortgage. And I'm the one who's going to fire you if you're not doing a good job, but you can't fire me. So now we have a, there's unequalness in this relationship. So when churches, it gets, it gets very confusing. Mm. Lines of authority, dual relationships. And so this has to be thoughtfully done and carefully done on all levels so that we don't hurt people mm. uh, and we don't disrupt the community. Mm. And the same thing goes, of course, when we hire family members, we hire friends, which is which actually is kind of normal in churches. And so I'm not against dual relationships in churches. I actually think it's in scripture. We, we see it, examples of it. The problem is we don't have around it a lot of awareness, mm. yeah. counsel, and wisdom so that it's managed well. What's one thing someone could do if they are faced with the situation right now of enlisting wise counsel to monitor? What's, what's just one practical suggestion as they monitor wise uh, dual relationships? Well, I would say, again, depending on your context. So I would say, let's say, for example, Rich, you, we want to hire a, uh, you, know, you, you want to hire your, you know, uh, uh, someone who's a really close friend of yours. Mm -hmm. But you know, because like, you love working with him, but you understand that you're really close to him. Well, you have to understand that that's, that's, that's kind of, you're, you're, even your judgment's a little bit skewed. Mm -hmm. So for it would be very important to bring in somebody, uh, like an elder or someone whom you respect, you know, in the community, to set some kind of a structure to, to, to preserve your relationship. You've got to then talk, with this, talk about it. This person comes on staff and you become their boss. Uh, friendship has certain qualities as well. That's a whole other story. But friendships have an equality to them of power. That person comes on the staff, it's going to change your relationship. And yeah. you've got to be able to talk about that and acknowledge it. Uh, there's not the same level of freedom you have right now. So I would say you've got to get some counsel. You've got to get some awareness. You better read this chapter. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, you hear that, everybody? Read the well, when, it ha when it comes and it goes badly, it yeah. is really bad. Yeah. When it goes well, it's awesome. Yeah. And again, I think we see some examples of it going yeah. well in the scripture. Uh, but we definitely have a lot of examples of it going poorly. Church is actually destroyed. Yeah. Uh, I think the Crystal Cathedral is probably one that happened most recently. Uh, the family really uh, has been written about quite extensively mm -hmm. how that family dynamic actually so hurt the church that as you yeah. know, they sold their building yeah. uh, completely. So yeah. that gives you a taste. Yeah. And finally here, uh, I guess it, it seems to be uh, further commentary on what you just said. Be friends with friends, a pastor to parishioners, a mentor to mentorees, and a supervisor to 
volunteers or employees. Yes. So is that a fuller application of that? Is that Yeah, I think I think you've got to determine what's my primary relationship with this person. Am I their uh, you know, am I their supervisor? Am I their boss? Am I their friend? And I think it's question, what's primary here? I want to be friendly with everybody. I want to be friends. But what's the primary role here? There are certain people for me that I'm just, you know, they have nothing to do with New Life Fellowship, nothing to do with emotional spirituality. We're just like, we're just friends. It's just, it's just, I'm not trying to raise money from them. It's just, a, it's just we're just having a great time. Yeah. Um, I'm really, I mean, I consider you a friend. I mean, Ruthie works for EHS. Uh, but I'm definitely in a different relationship with Ruthie. I'm her, I'm her boss, you know. Um, it's different. I mean, I, I, I determine her salary and raises and all that stuff. Uh, there's a certain a line there, yeah. which I think I respect, and I know that with her. Although I really enjoy her company, uh, and we have a lot of fun together, and that's really that's important to me. Yeah. But uh, my primary relationship with her is her supervisor yeah. at EHS. Yeah. That's significant. Um, Ten principles for exercising power and wise boundaries. At the conference, we're going to hear this as much as some new other content is coming up, and that's April twenty second and second third. 23rd here in this room here uh in queens new york city at new life fellowship it's limited Church. to 350 people 350 people for and i believe a third of that is already by the time we hear this is probably more than that uh but you can go on our website uh new life fellowship you can for more from new life .org or emotionally healthy.org to register there and so pete as always it's been great thanks rich good to be with you thank you very much see you next time everyone